Well, it's fair to say that life has changed more than a little bit for our next guest since winning the reality TV series Pick Me MTV back in April of 2008. Landing her dream job as an MTV presenter has put Laura Whitmore face to face with some of the biggest celebrities on the planet. And now, just a little bit more than a year in the role, she is putting her name to a fashion collection, no less. Laura joins us now to tell us about her hectic role as the face of MTV. Laura, good morning to you. Good morning to you guys. Thanks for having me. Very, very welcome on the show. The first time I met Laura was on Eamon Keane's news talk show. It was. I rang you up and I was booking your taxis yeah. for you to get you in and bring you into the studio. And Eamon very excitedly took me after we had, had the show, whatever kind yeah. of thing, and said, she's going to be the next star. Do you know what? No one was supposed to know, I know. that. And I told him because he was my boss. And then he goes and tells yeah, everyone. Yeah, but well, I didn't tell anyone. It didn't break the no, news. No, you kept it quiet. But he was, well, you well, his had... job, what do you expect? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know if it had been confirmed that you'd gotten it yet and you were waiting to find because out. The show hadn't been aired yet, so yeah. I had yeah. to keep it quite quiet. But uh, I had a big grin on my face. So it was probably a bit obvious that I won. Yeah, brilliant. But it was a huge deal to win, Laura. Like, it's a massive gig to get. It still hasn't hit me. Yeah. You know, to this day, it still doesn't hit me that like, I'm in a studio. Even now, I'm like, I'm on Ireland AM, which is quite a big thing because I grew up watching, you know, this show. <laughs> So now I'm like, God, I'm on the telly. How did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about seeing the competition and deciding to enter it and going through the, the process. Yeah, well, I I'd studied journalism at DCU and I was doing an internship at News Talk and then I'd just been made permanent. And uh, I was watching TV one night, a bit of MTV News, and I saw that they were looking for a new presenter. And I think that would be a pretty nice job to get. But uh, do you know when you're in that state of half awake, half asleep? And then I was like, was that a dream? Did I actually <laughs> see that? So the next day, a bit of Google and saw that it was an actual uh, competition. So I sent in... Um, a MySpace video, I had to get my little younger brother to help me with that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then from 3,000 people, I won wow. the competition. 3,000, Laura. Mm. And was it, was it really, really tough to do? I mean, were there loads of screen tests and loads of testing, or were they quite keen on you from the start? Or how did it work? I, I honestly didn't think I had a hope in hell. I was Seriously? just so excited just to go up to London and see the MTV studios. Um, even to this day, I still don't know why I won, but I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to ask any questions. Um, but it was just, it was quite relaxed for me, because although it was quite intense over like a two-month period, yeah. I was just taking each day as it comes and it was a bit of fun, you know, and I was, I had studied journalism but I never had like practical experience in a studio, so even just to get in there as part of the competition and yeah. read an autocue, oh, it was my first time doing that, so I didn't know if I was any good at it, but at least I was getting experience that way, but didn't think I'd win. So when you got the call, did you go do lally and go crazy, go out on the town, ring the folks, what was the first reaction? I was just, I just shock. It was the first time I, I like to talk which is quite good for being a presenter. It was the first time I had nothing to say. I was just completely speechless. Did you have any doubts? I mean, it's a big move, yeah. moving from, from Dublin across to London. Or was it instant? I've applied, I'm gone, instant. I'll see you. It was instant. I'll see you. Bye, Mom, bye, Dad. Yeah. See you. Nice <laughs> um, No, it was instant. I always wanted to go to London anyway, just yeah. to kind of live over there. It was like a rites of passage, a lot of friends over there. So I always wanted to do that. And the fact that I was going over to a job made my mom quite happy because she was like, oh, God, my only daughter's going over to London and she hasn't got a job. But then I was like, I'm fine, Mom. I'm meant to be presenter. I'm sorted. It's fine. Now, look, let, let's, 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 mm. none of this, oh, it's a hard life, 15 hours a day. You've been in L.A. on the red carpet. You've been here, there. Who have you met? Who's impressed you? Um, besides your good selves. Um, <laughs> hey, pro. Hey, <laughs> um, do you know what? Everyone always says, who's the biggest disappointment? No one has really been a disappointment. Everyone mm. is quite nice. Nicer than you think they're going to be. Yeah. Who was not nice, Laura? Don't Give us the this. dirt. They're all Come lovely. On. They're all lovely. They're, um, they'll never know. We're in Ireland. <laughs> they'll never hear it. Everyone watches Ireland AM. What are you talking about? Um, no, do you know what? Everyone has been absolutely lovely. I met Lionel Richie, who's just the funnest guy. Really? Ever. Yeah, and it's like Lionel Richie, the legend that he is. Um, Hugh Jackman was lovely. Uh, there's been some crazy people. Robert Downey Jr. was a bit mental. He's mental, but I love that. Like, I was sitting opposite him and he started pretending to he was a dog. I don't know, has that ever happened? Is that a normal thing that happens? Maybe with he people? wanted you to rub his tummy. <laughs> no, I didn't try that. I, I talked to the dog hand and then I said, do you mind if I talk to Robert now, please? So what does the normal day entail, if, it's, mm. if there is such a thing as a normal day? How does it work for you? Um, there really isn't a normal day. Yeah. You know, like, I'll go in and do news bulletins, which would be, that would be the only kind of consistency throughout uh, a week, but... You know, premieres vary and festivals vary. Like this weekend is V Festival, so I'll be covering yeah. that. And it just depends. Like summer is so busy because there's so much stuff going on. But uh, there is no normal day, and I don't want there to be a normal day. No, you're right. You're so. loving it. And what about when it comes to being starstruck? Was there anyone for you you were like, oh, I can't believe I'm talking to them? Or was it all, yeah, it's cool, I'm being professional here, not a bother? It's weird. You kind of click into this mode, and yeah. at the end of the day, it's just people that you're meeting. Yeah. Um, the only, I remember once getting starstruck by Glenn Hansard because I saw him checking out of a hotel. 
And I was like, to my producer, I was like, oh my God, that's Glenn Hansard. <laughs> and he's like, who? I was like, Glenn Hansard, you won an Oscar. <laughs> he's in the commitments, he's in the frames. And yeah, so I got starstruck by him. I went up and I just was like, hey. And he's like, who is that weirdo? But um, <laughs> everyone else though, it's just you kind of get into this kind of, you know, you're in there to ask the questions, you want the sound bites and at the end of the day, that's what you do. And if you hadn't gotten the MTV, you would have kept going until you got something. Uh, yeah, well, I had the yeah. job and news talk yeah. on Amy Keane's show, better mention his name. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I was loving that and just kind of getting the basics, really, because I was only out of uh, college and I wanted to kind of get a bit more practical so experience. So what's the grand plan, Laura? What's after MTV? There is no plan, Sinead. Just kind of oh, go with lies, the flow. Oh, lies, lies. My 10-year plan. Um, <laughs> no, just keep going, challenge yeah. myself. But is know? it that world that you love? Is it music? Is it celebs? Is that the thing that gets you going? Is that what you're interested in? I mean, because when I was working on, in news talk, yeah. you, obviously there was no music on um, the radio station, which is where to go to MTV now, but uh, I was interested in everything. Do you, do yeah. you know, just the whole yeah. process of interviewing someone, whether they be a TD or a rock star, it's still the same idea. The You're just having it's a chat with someone, yeah. a bit of banter. So I don't know. I'd love yeah. to, I love writing, I love radio, so I'd like to keep that up, maybe. Well, look, you're into promoting a new collection yeah. of clothing. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it's got a, your name. Uh, yeah, it's the Laura Whitmore Impulse um, collection by Awer. I'm wearing a dress. Do you like? Very nice. Very lovely. nice, Laura. Right? Yes. Um, yeah, I absolutely love it. Fashion is something I've always been really into. Uh, you were going to be a model, actually, weren't you? Well, I wasn't really. I talk way too much. No, you, were, you were the next Kate Moss touted as. Uh, every, when you start off, everyone tells you the next this, you're the next that, but don't believe anything. That's the one thing I've learned. Um, but I've always been really big into fashion at DCU, I was on the Style Society, I was editor of the fashion magazine, I wrote style things for the paper, I styled um, a lot of shoots, and just, it'd be great. it's great now in this position to have A where an impulse come to me and say, you know, we really like your style, because I style myself for MTV, we really like how you dress, so we've modelled our autumn winter collection on you, which is quite an honour, and I was like, Re really me? Really? And is the style better in London than it is in Dublin? Are London oh, women dress better, here, are they? guys. I love Slowly. coming home. No, no, we're totally... Uh, Awer is great, because Awer's moved over to the UK yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, and I've seen Girls Aloud and Grazia magazines and everything, wearing them, so it's mm -hmm. a huge, it's huge, it's great to be part of them, because I grew up at Awer, you know, coming into the shop and the town when you were younger, when you only had five pounds and you could buy, you know, your yeah, lunch, something. your top, everything. So, so how big is this collection going to be, and uh, how long more? Are you going to do it across the next few seasons, or...? Well, it's just this season just at this the season, moment. Okay. Uh, there's 20 pieces, ranging from everything from bags, belts, dresses, leather jackets, because I love my leather jackets, and... Uh, they range from ten pounds upwards, so you know it's it's very affordable. If you had price. to describe it, Laura, well, how would you describe it? Because that's very kind of very cool, but seventies, tastic, but glitzy, bit glammy, but very trendy and very now. So how would you describe it to people? It's it's quite a mixture, probably like my style. There's a little bit of rock there, but yeah. there's a little bit of grunge, which is a bit of glamour with grunge. A lot of sequences, a little bit of glitz. Glunge, that's glunge. you and me. Glamour and grunge. Glamour and grunge mix okay. it together. You can make any words up these of days. Get you two can. things, mash them together. And they're in the dictionary the following year. <laughs> yeah. Who did you look to when you were sort of getting interested in style? Who who did it for you? Do you know what? My friends, really. Right, okay. you know, yeah. you kind of, all my friends dress completely differently, but you kind of take bits and pieces. Yeah. That top's nice, that's nice. Um, I love Daisy Lowe. Yeah, uh, I think she's, she rocks. She, yeah. Just because she's so casual, she looks so comfortable in your clothes. And I think that's the most important thing, is to be comfortable with what you're wearing, particularly with the job we do. You know, you don't want to be sitting there yourself. You don't want to be sitting there something really restricted and talk you're thinking me, about what you're wearing. How, how, how much of an input or how much of a say did you have in the, in the overall design of this? Was it total control or did you have Oh, no, I, I came in quite late stage. They okay. came to me and said, look, we have this collection. Have a look it's at you. it. It's, it's based on you. You are inspiration. Have a look. See if you're happy with it. Had a look. And I was just so honoured that... They totally got exactly what I wanted. And yeah, so, so, when does it go in store? When can people get their hands on the Laura Whitmore no. Awear collection? You haven't got it already. Not yet, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> yeah, it's in store now. You can also buy online from awear.com. Um, we're having the big launch tonight at the Royal Hibernian Academy in Eli Place. So, I'm really looking forward to it. Well, good luck Fantastic. With this. Thank you very much. And continued success with MTV and whatever Thank else you, you choose crossed. to do. Good luck to you. Thanks. Nice meeting as well. Well Laura. done to you, Laura. Best of luck for the future. Thank I'm you. sure you'll continue on rising up that ladder.